Hello, my name is Zach Kerstetter. I am an Ableton Live instructor at Pyramind, and today I want to talk a little bit about arrangement in Ableton Live, specifically moving from the session view over to the arrangement view. So one of my absolute favorite parts about Ableton Live is they give you the option to load up all your clips and samples and MIDI files and everything, which allows you to write and create and generate material really quickly and really easily without having to settle in on any kind of arrangement, meaning you don't necessarily need to put things in a timeline from start to finish. You can let everything kind of float around and launch them when you feel the time is right and find out what sounds work together with what other sounds, which in my opinion really enhances the directions that you can take a song using Ableton. But eventually, at some point when you're working, you're gonna to need to arrange it. In order to have a finished song, it has to exist in some arranged form. Now when talking about the session view and the arrangement view, I like to use the metaphor of my song is like a painting. And the session view is basically where my palette of different colors is gonna be. All the different ideas I'm gonna be drawing upon to use my painting are all right there for me, waiting for me to pick them and use them and put them into my song or painting. Let's take a look at what I have going on here. I have a drum track with a bunch of MIDI clips in it, some percussion, some bass tracks here, a couple of different synthesizers, a piano, and a violin track. I kept it very simple for, for this example, but it's enough material that I can have a decent amount of variety when I do decide to start arranging this. There are a handful of methods you can use to take your song from the session to arrangement. The first method that I want to talk about involves using a MIDI controller. In this case, I am using my Ableton Push to launch different clips and I'm going to record the entire performance of myself launching different clips, which will then be the basis for my arrangement. And that is the reason I have this red box in my session view. This sets up my MIDI controller so that on the grid of 64 buttons, each button is aligned to a different clip within my session. So if I were to hit a button on my MIDI controller, it's going to launch the corresponding clip. And I can move around my session using the air buttons on my MIDI controller. So let's take a look about how this works before we go into some other different methods. First thing I'm gonna do, and pretty much the only thing I need to do besides launch clips, is make sure I turn on my arrangement record button up top here, this big red button. Once that is enabled, anything and everything I do in my session, launching clips, moving parameters on different effects, adjusting volumes, everything, will be recorded in real time to the arrangement. So let's see how that looks. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch a couple clips and just take a look at what's going on. So if I stop it and actually take a look at what it did, you can see every time I launched a clip, it recorded the launching of that clip. When I stopped a clip, it stopped recording the that clip into my arrangement. And I can take a look at this and start editing it as I see fit. I like this method because it involves a lot of performance and improvisation to it. I can do this a number of different times and each time I'll get something slightly different or maybe completely different depending on which clips I launch. So I'm gonna go ahead and command A, select all, and delete to start over. So I like this method because it's really easy. It's a lot of fun. There's not a whole lot of thought behind it. You just kind of jam out, and each time you do it, it might be completely different. So what if you don't own a grid-based MIDI controller? What if you don't have access to something like a Push or an APC40 or any of the controllers out there that will do this for you? If you do own a different MIDI controller, you can always hit the Command M button to go to your MIDI mapping mode or hit this MIDI button up top here. Once you're in this mode, you can click on any clip slot, hit any control on a MIDI controller, and that button will then launch that clip. So this is a bit more work. You have to manually go in there and pick every single clip you have and assign it to a MIDI control. 
but in the end we'll get you pretty much the same result. So what if you don't have access to a MIDI controller? There's another solution that might apply for you. You can hit Command K to go into your key mapping mode or hit this key button up here and assign different clip slots to different keys on your computer keyboard. And so I can go through and assign these to different letters. And keep in mind that capital letters map differently than lowercase letters. So you can see uppercase Q is going to be this clip, lowercase Q will launch that clip. And once again, it'll do the exact same thing. I hit my arrangement record button and then launch different clips using my computer keyboard. Now lastly, there's one other option that you can choose to help arrange your song if it's in the session view, and that is the capture and insert scene function, which can either be accessed by going to create, capture and insert scene, or just hit shift command I. Now what this is gonna do is it's going to take every single clip that's currently playing and create a new scene in your session view. So let's take a look at how this works. So say I wanna start my song with this reverse piano clip. What I'm gonna do is select a scene beneath all these other clips that I'm working with. And while it's playing, I'm just gonna hit Shift Command I. And you can see directly underneath the scene that I just selected, it copied that clip that was playing and continued playing it. We're gonna use this to build our arrangement going down in our session view, one scene at a time. So I'm gonna pick another clip that I wanna to add to go with this. Say I wanna add some percussion. I'm gonna go down to the scene that I just added, Shift Command I, and you can see it copied both the reverse piano that was playing plus this new clip that I added. Now I can choose to add even more. And you can see, as I change clips from one clip to another clip, or I stop clips, it no longer adds them to my little mini arrangement that I'm building here. This is only the first half of what I'm actually gonna be doing here. The second half is after I build a little miniature arrangement for myself, all I have to do is, once again, enable my arrangement record, go to the scene that I first started with, launch this scene,
And one of the nice parts about using this method is that it's really easy to do with the mouse. I can just launch one scene at a time and still have the option to improvise and stop clips, launch different clips, change it up, do whatever I want, and fix it while I'm still working on it. And of course, if I am working on this arrangement and I decide, you know what, this isn't quite working for me, there's always tons and tons of editing I can do within the arrangement view, especially if, say, I wanted to use this clip and I didn't actually get to use this. I can just simply hit Command-C to copy, go over to where I want to paste it, Command-V to paste it, and now that clip is being used at that section of my song. So once you've moved into the arrangement view, don't be afraid to go back, copy and paste, drag things you might not have used, move things around, and start making adjustments. When I move from the session to the arrangement, my first arrangement is never the one I actually end up using in my song. It goes through lots of editing, tons and tons of changes, and it usually ends up sounding completely different than it did before. So I like to think of the act of moving from the session to the arrangement as kind of building a foundation for my arrangement and then once I'm there, I end up moving things around, editing it, making things longer, making things shorter, fixing mistakes I might have made. That's one of the nice parts about moving from the session to the arrangement. You are in no way committed to what you've done. There's tons of room for mistakes and changing your mind and coming up with different ideas on the fly. So there's a couple methods you can use for moving from the session to the arrangement. It's really up to you how you choose to use them and which method you choose to use. It obviously depends on your access to a MIDI controller. But my advice is to stay away from launching clips one at a time using a mouse. It can be really tedious and tough to get multiple clips launched at the same time. That's why I tend to use the capture and insert scene function because one button will launch most of what I want to do while still giving me room to change things and still make adjustments. So that is it for moving from the session to the arrangement. Thanks for watching. Very much like to thank Pyramide for hosting me here once again. Um, I think this institution is really cool, and until I came here for the first time, I had never seen anything like it in my whole life. What I think really separates us from other people who teach is that we are outrageously passionate about what we do, and especially in electronic music. Since since coming to Pyramind, I, I've discovered electronic music, and you know, San Francisco being a mecca for underground electronic music opened up so many doors for me, and kind of blew my mind. We cover everything from absinthe to contact. When people get to the mind-melting level, uh, we get into modular synthesis. Everything about native instruments, everything about logic synths, down to the, the finest detail, we, we learned it all. The fundamentals of understanding how things work, that's just essential. But then beyond that, there's so much more, and that's where it gets into just a lot of, of the artistic side of like, the creative approach of, of why you do something, not just how. There's a lot of schools that just, you know, they focus on the technicality of, of recording music, um, but I wanted something that would foster creativity and, and really help me develop as an artist as well. Each of our genre-specific programs comes in four levels. There's a basic, an advanced, a professional, and then a master's level. And the master's level is, of course, everything we do. It's the largest and most powerful programs that we can create for you.